Well then, Bunny, let's talk about books. You see, people always say to me here in Oklahoma, people always say to me, hey, look, a Mexican. <laughs> to which I say, really? Where? And then I look around comically before I realize, oh, snap, they're talking about me. <laughs> I constantly forget my race, especially, you know, when when you're raised essentially as a white American and you find yourself, you know, Oklahoma surrounded by dusty white guys with hands that are 90 percent calluses. Yeah. Essentially, essentially, I'm a race unicorn. (laughs) Yes. Really? I mean, do you know how rare it is to find a Latino that doesn't know about his culture? (laughs) <laughs> I mean, usually Latinos are, I imagine it's the same way that North Koreans are taught to be proud of North Korea. Yeah. Just constantly drilled into you, sometimes painfully and with a whip. <laughs> yes, true. It's, it's, yeah, it's the same thing about being proud of your Mexican heritage. It's just something that parents always inject into you unless they don't necessarily unless they don't care about you, which was in my case. So I, I'm so rare. I'm, I'm Mewtwo all up in here. <laughs> or Pokemon. Give me a rare Pokemon name, Bella. The rare one. Lugia. I'm a Lugia. You're a Lugia. I'm a Lugia. That sounds horrible. I'm a Lugi something. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm more than a unicorn, really. Because, because... <laughs> Like I'm rarer than a unicorn. You know what I am? I'm a turducacorn. A turducacorn. Okay, that is... Turkey Yeah. in a duck in a unicorn. The hardest thing with a turducacorn, and this is the same thing that's difficult with a turducken, is to get the animals to eat each other in the right order. Because so many times I've tried to make a turducken and then suddenly... You know, the chicken is eating the turkey, and it's like, no, I'm not, not making yet. a chick turduck. Mm-hmm. That's not what this is. It's difficult to get the the eating order properly. Yes. <laughs> People also say, hey, write what you know. And what I know is that I have been a loyal and essentially hardworking employee at my local bookstore for over 17 years. Mm-hmm. Actually, throughout my bookselling career, my two greatest assets have been mental stability and being like really smart. Oh. Borders, before. Borders, books, and music also played these cards very hard. And as everyone knows, Borders, books, and music went down in flames. Yes. I went. From very successful kids lead to top storytelling star to receiving manager on my first try. Mm -hmm. I think that would qualify as not smart, but genius. Yeah. And a very stable genius at that. Mm -hmm. Everybody says that. Everybody says that. Everybody says that. I nailed that. And as such, I really do have my skeletal fingers on the hands of the book world. And I am here to wave my skeletal fingers menacingly into your ear holes with this week's brilliantly stupid installment of Notes from the Bookstore. Yes. (laughs) Now, Now, of course, we have to. We have to. Talk about the big news. Yes. The the big news in the literary world, the big news in the bookstore world, the news that everybody is talking about, that everyone has been talking nonstop about, the one thing on everybody's lips, what's on everyone's mind, the only thing you hear people talking about. Mm -hmm. Go for it. Come on. I am I am talking of course 
about the fact that someone tagged my men's bathroom stalls. Oh, did they? Son of a bitch. Now, Bunny, I am currently sending you a photograph right now via Facebook Messenger. Um, now, it's difficult to see, so you'll have to click on the picture and kind of zoom in a little bit. It, someone, someone didn't just tag the bathroom stall. Someone carved a word, a name, on the wall of the bathroom itself. Okay, I'm working on getting there. Okay, it, it's it's. I am so upset about this. Massively upset about this. I'm so upset. I'm I'm I I I. This this enrages me. This enrages me. That's a name. Yes, you need to really uh, 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 zoom in to to see what someone has carved. Whenever you can, like you goat or something. Uh the the second letter is a U, but it yeah. looks like a V. And then the third letter is an I. This is going to have to go over to Photoshop now. So it's Q-U-I and then a dash. I want you to figure out what this says and tell me. I want you to be the one who says it. Okay, working on it. It's it's a three... U I, yeah, and then a dash. Uh huh. G O N. Yes. Dash. And then a dash. J I N. Yes. Q Gun Jin. Q Qui Qui Gun Jin. Qui Gun Jin. Somebody, somebody fucking carved. Okay. Someone carved Liam Neeson's Star Wars character's name on my fucking bathroom wall. <laughs> Is there what? an all points bulletin out for this person? There should be. What? What the hell, Bonnie? I don't I, know. I am ridiculously upset about this. I I it's... do not know, and and I don't blame you for being upset. That's fucking weird. Right. First of all. Uh, what is it? Fuck! Is it 1998? Like what the hell? <laughs> Put it right here. Secondly, Wandering. secondly, you carved it on the wall because writing actual tagging that 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 I could have painted over. No, you got a blade. Yeah, you got a blade, and you freaking carved this. <laughs> you you committed vandalism which i don't mind but for qui-gon Jin, yeah that's the problem here that's the problem i'm having yeah why qui-gon Jin? especially since this is the prequels we're talking about here nobody likes the prequels yeah in fact in fact the only person who likes the prequels is <gasps> bunny did George Lucas tag my bathroom? I think he might have. Wasn't he stalking you for a while? You know what? You know what? I'm going to MAGA this. I'm going to MAGA this. I'm going to take this unverified, unstantiated, unsubstantiated rumor and blow it completely out of proportion into a massive conspiracy theory with absolutely no proof whatsoever. Bunny, help me out. I, I think you should. Uh, what do we uh, do? George Lucas, he uh -huh. was in my store. Why was he in my store? I'm assuming. I'm assuming because uh, he knows that I don't like Star Wars anymore. Yeah. And uh, and, and Tim Burton is paying him. Yes, Tim Burton is definitely involved in this. Mm -hmm. Tim Burton is definitely involved in this. Now, uh, George Lucas is the only person who likes the prequels. The prequels were the last Star Wars movies he made. So if he's watching all of these new movies come out and break box office records and he's jealous. So he's trying 
to get people excited. I wouldn't be surprised if there's like a if if at the the bookstore in in Sacramento he's carving like Jar Jar Binks's name into the walls, you know? Yeah. Jar Jar. Uh uh Dexter Jet Setter or whatever the name of that big giant like six armed the guy who owned the diner. Yeah. Uh-huh. I may have I may have na- nailed the the name, but but it's a, it's obvious now what happened. George Lucas is tagging bathroom stalls. Everybody, George Lucas is tagging bathrooms. Yes, everybody needs to be on the lookout for G- George Lucas tagging your bathrooms. That is, of course, the big story that everybody is talking about. No I, I have I have not heard anything about it until now. Yeah. And yeah. I am shocked. Okay. Shocked. Well, in other literary news, in other literary news, the other big story out there is, of course, the Oklahoma City Thunder. Okay, who are they? And, Some sort uh, of sports team, I would imagine. Yes, the NBA's premier team right behind every other team. Oh, my God. Is this who used to be the Seattle Supersonics? I have no freaking clue. Freaking stole our basketball team. We were so freaking pissed. Pissed, pissed, <laughs> pissed, pissed, pissed. Yeah, that's weird when teams leave. God. Yeah, like the Arizona Cardinals, they were somewhere else. I don't know where they were before they came to Arizona. God. <laughs> freaking stole our basketball team. Oh, you know, you know, you know what? Le- looking into the Oklahoma City Thunder for this part of the podcast, I learned that Phoenix, Arizona, is the only the Phoenix is the only city in America to have four professional sports teams play on the exact same day. Really? Yeah, they had the uh, the 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 Phoenix uh, Coyotes which is the the hockey team they lost and then that same day the Arizona Cardinals the football team played and lost and then on that same night the Phoenix Suns played and lost mm-hmm. and then on that same night the the Arizona Diamondbacks their uh major league baseball team won Game 7 of the World Series. Oh, well, they didn't lose? No, What's no, they actually won. I don't know. It must have been something weird. They were probably on the juice. They were probably on the juice. So, the Thunder's point guard, I think, I don't know sports, which is what this story is about. Yeah. So the, so the Thunder's point guard and current superstar is Mr. Russell Westbrook. Okay. He's like the star of the OKC Thunder. He Does he have a magazine cover in your store? <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, but he does have a super expensive art fashion type coffee table book. Okay. So this weekend, he is doing a huge book signing at one of the Oklahoma City stores. And it's going to be such a big event that the store there is looking for extra employees in other stores to work in their store for that day. Okay. Like the signing is going to be so big that they're desperate for more employees than they have. So they're looking to other stores to see if anybody wants to work it. So my store manager comes up to me and she says, Hey Steve, do you want to work the Russell Westbrook signing this Sunday? And so, um, We've known each other for about a year now, and uh, she is a wonderful person. Uh, But I'm a very complicated individual, so it it takes a while to learn all of my facets. Yes. So she says, hey, do you want to work the Russell Westbrook signing on Sunday at at the May Avenue store? And I just stare at her, blinking in silence (laughs) for maybe too long. And then I ask her... Doesn't he do a sport? So that's a good indication of no, I will not be working the Russell Westbrook signing. 
Yeah. Especially since I don't think I'd be able to point him out of a lineup, you know? <laughs> okay, that's definitely Russell Westbrook. Which is that's very important the- when it comes to sports figures. Yeah. Yeah. More yeah. than one of them has been in a lineup. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It, 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 is that Russell Westbrook? No, that is not. No, that's 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 Cliff Richard. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know. I don't know my sports. Is that him? <laughs> no, sir. That is Pauly Shore. Oh, okay. Is it that one? But I've done. I I I have. I've done worked in some big signings. Yeah. I I have done some pretty big signings. Um, Ozzy Osbourne came to my store. Yeah. In no. California. Yeah. And a, a huge, massive, like line around the block for Ozzy. And the crazy thing is that Ozzy is like a, um, he's like a natural phenomenon. Yes. He's like a, he, he, so he actually showed up in his tour bus an hour and 10 minutes early. And so the signing was an hour and 10 minutes early. Okay. Because whenever Ozzy shows up, that's when the signing was. He showed up over an hour early. I guess we're starting an hour early then. Yes. Because what are you going to do? Tell Ozzy no? I'm pretty sure he doesn't understand anything. <laughs> you know? I I, I would agree. I, I'm, I don't think he knows where he is at any given time. Yeah. 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 That's basically it. Um. It, uh, David Bowie's ex-wife Angela had a signing at my store in Arizona, and apparently, when they divorced, um, David Bowie was just sleeping with all these men and sleeping with all these women and sleeping with more of these men and sleeping with these famous men. And Angela Bowie would be coming home, and she's like, "Oh, I can't wait to see my husband!" And oh, there he is, uh, uh, blowing Mick Jagger in in our bed. Okay, then. <laughs> This is a fun marriage for me. I'm really excited. So when they divorced, that basically uh, part of the divorce was you cannot say anything about our marriage in public for at least 10 years. So once the 10 years was up, she published this book. That, and that's it's like, oh, good. good. Yeah. And it's like, oh, wow, this is a pretty big deal. The Rolling Stones wrote Angie about her. Yeah. Yeah, the song Angie was about Angela Bowie, for Christ's sake, you know? You it's like, that? wow, this is this is freaking history. Yeah. You know? And then the biggest the biggest signing I ever had to deal with was um James Patterson came to our store. Legendary author James freaking Patterson came to our store. And he, he had a he had a signing on Halloween and it was really weird because people came in costume. Okay. Like imagine just a store full of, you know, five hundred women and each one is in a different stupid Halloween costume and they're crying because they're gonna meet uh author James Patterson. But the crazy thing is, is that James Patterson is a massively famous name, but also not someone you could pick out in a lineup because he showed up for the signing. Uh, His signing was at like six o'clock and he's like, Hey, I'm in town. I'm going to come in at like 9 AM and uh, just talk to the employees and shake some hands. And then he just sat down in our comfy chairs and read the onion laughing out loud to himself for like 45 minutes. (laughs) Okay. And nobody knows, like, if James Patterson was sitting next to you on the bus, you wouldn't know it's him. Like, who knows who, who what? Who knows how James Patterson looks, you know? Yeah. Same thing with Tom Clancy. Like, I never could pick him out. Uh-huh. So, yeah, he was just in our store for, like, almost an hour just hanging out. And no one had any idea. So then when the s- signing happens and there's, like, 700 women all crying, excited to meet James Patterson. I'm like, dude, you should have been here at nine 30. He sat on that chair reading onion articles to himself and laughing his ass off. What, what does he, what does he write with all these women? Uh, James Patterson. He is all over the place. Uh, in my mind, I always remember 
he, he's written a bunch of books that got turned into movies, and then he started writing books for teens. He has a this series called the Maximum Ride series. Emerald was really obsessed with it when she was like a preteen. Uh-huh. And uh, now he's writing books for kids. There's a kid series, a number of kids books, a number of kids books. One of them called Middle School, The Worst Year of My Life was turned into a movie uh, that came out the beginning of last year, I believe. He 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 just he's one of those authors that like comes out with like six to 12 books a year. Uh huh. OK. One of those authors that just kind of lends his name to other people's works and he's 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 just everywhere hell um uh peter yarrow from peter paul and mary did a concert in my children's department really not only yeah because he had done a uh, a picture book version of uh puff the magic dragon and it was published by uh our corporation so he did this like tiny little tour where he did mini concerts acoustic concerts in children's departments all across America. And we, it was a huge deal, a big deal, a massive deal. People pay money to see this man in concert. So it was a big, huge deal for us. And then three days before his concert in our store, Mary freaking dies. (laughs) And we're like, Oh my God. Oh my God. He's not coming. We have so many people that are going to show up for this event and he's not coming, but he still came and he did like an hour long concert. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. He still uh, came and I opened for him. I did a little story time on the stage before uh it, before he did his concert and the some of the kids there were so excited that Mr. Steve was was at this event that they ended up at the end dogpiling me. So there's like five kids on top of me and suddenly I see a hand to pull me up and it's freaking Peter Yarrow. <laughs> I, I so, still don't believe him about Puff the Magic Dragon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I no, think he's no. full of fucking shit. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. So Russell Westbrook, no thank you. So let's see. Uh, Qui Gon Jinn done. Russell Westbrook done. Well, that's pretty much it. I mean, there's no other big literary news out there. Yeah. Right to talk about. Um, not that I'm aware of. I, I haven't heard of any kind of famous books or anything like that, or, you know, no. uh, there is one book, any, that any did... kind of like insider thing. I, I haven't heard of uh, anything like that. There is one book that came out. Um, it's kind of a big deal. I'm talking, of course, of course. About the 2002 book, The Big Book of Lesbian Horse Erotica. Okay. By Monica Nolan and Elisa Circus. It's all the media is talking about in my head. Anyway. I, I haven't actual, heard of that one, no. Actual book, by the way, worth a Google. <laughs> worth a Google. <laughs> worth a Google. Anyway. Fire and Fury. The goddamn bane of my existence right now. I hate yeah. this book. Michael Wolf and publisher Henry Holt can suck it hard. <laughs> okay. So, so here's the deal with this book. Uh, yeah. Henry Holt, the publisher, did not expect the book to be that big of a hit. Uh, they planned a very small initial run of the book. The book was originally slated to come out the 9th of January, and uh, our store was scheduled to get less than 20 copies. So not a lot of copies of this book were originally going to exist. Somebody really underestimated how much we truly hate our president. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It was originally a strict on sale title. The logistics of a strict on title sale mean that, that, uh, okay, this is the official rollout date legally. Of this book. If you get this book beforehand, you have to keep it in the box. You have to not open it. You have to keep it in your receiving area and wait until legally you can put it out on the floor. And anyone who does otherwise will be fined and will be prosecuted and yada, yada, yada. It's a big ass deal. So what that also means is that the publisher, you know, sends out the copies of the book about a week or so before the strict on sale date. Yeah. 
So the books will arrive at stores around the Thursday or Friday or even the day before the strict on sale date. So when the publisher up and decided late on Thursday to move the release date up to Friday, Mm. only about maybe 25% of the stores got the book into the stores. Because the date was Tuesday. The strict on sale date was Tuesday. And the books were already on the way. So the publisher saying, oh, well, the strict on the sale date is now Friday. The, the, the book is now coming out on Friday. That day, So everyone in the world assumed, okay, then I can easily get it on Friday. But no, it, a week ago that you already sent out the book. So now we're just stuck waiting for the books that you already sent us. <laughs> okay. You know, like we're stuck there. The the boxes are already in transit, for Christ's sake. So Friday rolls around. And the moment we open the door, here are 20 people storming in, demanding for the book that we haven't gotten in yet. How come you don't have it? I saw in the news that it was coming out today. OK, well, it, they sent us the book about five days ago. <laughs> waiting for it to come in. But they said it was coming out today. They said that you could buy it today. The release date was pushed to today. That doesn't mean it will be available today. They already sent it to us, and now we're just waiting. It could come on Friday. It could come on Monday. Heck, it could even come on Tuesday if it comes late, which does happen sometimes. So, look, we haven't gotten the book in yet. And besides, we're only getting a small amount anyway. And they're, those copies are probably all going to special orders. Bunny, it's 2018. You try being a minority and telling angry white people you don't have the political book they want. Yeah. That's a freaking death sentence. Yes. So Henry Holt, the publisher, got caught with their pants down and planned for a small relief. And now they're basically on crack, struggling to meet the needs of basically... 80% of all Americans who want this book. So imagine like the, 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 the demand of like a Harry Potter book times 20. Yeah. Basically every other person in America wants this book. You know, two thirds of all of society want to buy a copy of this right now. And we try and explain to people that, they, that it's the publisher's fault the publisher wasn't expecting the demand. Nobody, be nobody believes us. Yeah, it's a they're conspiracy, ready, isn't it? It's yeah, a conspiracy. They're ready, they're ready to blame us. You try, you try explaining that to an angry seventy-two-year-old veteran. That 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 friggin', friggin liberal bookstore. They don't have it. They don't understand the intricacies of the world of publishing. They're blaming you. They're blaming the company. They're blaming brick and mortar stores. Ooh, it's a conspiracy, one customer said. We're lying. Obviously, we have hundreds of copies in the back. Okay. Hundreds of copies in the back that we just don't want to sell. <laughs> now, look, I have a lot of things in my back room, including a Lego Batman poster. A picture of Castiel from Supernatural drinking milk while dressed as a kitty cat. I have a life-size cutout of my favorite member of the uh, boy band One Direction. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Which is, true, which is true. I have a cutout of one of the aliens from Battlefield Earth. Oh, man. I have the poster for the Beach Girls and the Monster back there. But you know what I don't have? Hundreds of copies of Fire and Fury. Yeah. One thing I don't have back there. And also, maybe think through your conspiracy, you freaking geriatric Alex Jones, because you said, you, you're the same people who said that it was an evil liberal conspiracy when we didn't carry Milo Yiannopoulos' book. So what, now it's an evil Republican conspiracy of ours to not sell the anti-Trump book? Yeah. <laughs> So it is yes. So, so yes, it is. That's the fucking answer. Yes. Yeah, yeah. 
So, so it was a liberal conspiracy to not sell this Republican book, but now it's a Republican conspiracy of ours to not sell this liberal book. Mm -hmm. So it's a conspiracy of ours to try and not sell the hottest book on the planet. Yes. You need to think. You don't want people to know the truth. On Joe. Yeah, it's ridiculous. So the past week has just been a whirlwind of angry customers. How come you don't have that book, The Fast and the Furious? Well, ma'am, that's not a movie. That's a Vin Diesel book, number one. (laughs) And number two, because literally no one has it. No one has this book. Literally, it's nowhere right now. So I'm sorry, it's just not anywhere. Well, this is why you're going out of business. I'm going to Amazon. Well, okay, sure. I, I, I guess you thought I was speaking metaphorically when I said that literally no one has the book. <laughs> to be fair, you can buy it on Amazon. You can pay for it, and it's cheap as hell. And it ships out. It ships out right now from Amazon in two to four weeks. <laughs> yeah, so have fun with that. Good. Good. I got 20 I I got I got about 20ish copies uh on Monday and then I got a handful of copies on Wednesday and then that's it. Yeah, yeah I haven't gotten any more copies. But let me tell you something. Uh on Wednesday when I got a handful of copies for one split second, <laughs> Jesus H Christmas. I was the most powerful man on planet Earth. (laughs) I had five copies of Fire and Fury in my hand, and I swear to God, suddenly I was dressed like Doctor Doom. I don't know how it happened, but suddenly I had this like steel mask and this, you know, these. I had a, I I had, I, I looked at my hand that was holding the copies of Fire and Fury, and I swear to God, in my hand. I was wearing an infinity gauntlet. Oh. It was amazing. It was amazing. The power. The power. Incredible. The book itself. That's, that's some dedication from a lot of people who don't read. Yeah. 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 So there, just... there is something a, a, a little admirable in there. Yeah, it's like uh, what's his name? Uh, Jimmy Kimmel said, like he he said on his show that it, originally he wasn't going to care about the book. He he wasn't going to read it. He wasn't planning on purchasing it. But the what made the book popular is Donald Trump trying to stop it yeah. because now he wants to try and sue people for the book. Of course, now I'm going to buy twenty copies of it. Uh huh. Yeah. And and. Uh, and Donald Trump's lawyers hit Steve Bannon with a cease and desist uh, letter, which makes no sense because Donald Trump is saying this book is entirely false. This book is entirely false. None of this book is true. This man is a complete liar. Also, unrelated, I'm suing Steve Bannon for saying all of those things about me in the book. Steve in- Bannon? Then- in the book that I just said was false. Huh. I didn't so hear about it. I heard him, I heard him su- trying to sue Simon and Schuster. Yeah, no, he... From coming out. Steve Bannon, that one's news on me. Yeah, no, Steve Bannon really, he, he was interviewed at length by um, Michael Wolf, And I, I think the reason why Steve Bannon spilled so much to Michael Wolf is because he was just fired. He always hated Jared Kushner and Ivanka Trump. And so he in the book, Steve Bannon, Steve Bannon literally says what Jared Kushner did in meeting with the Russians is treasonous. And they are going to crack him like an egg live on TV. Yes. I remember that quote. Yeah, no, Steve Bannon would just dished out so much dirt that now Donald Trump hates Steve Bannon for saying all of those things about him <laughs> in the book. And Donald Trump sent a cease and desist letters to Steve Bannon, but you can't send cease and desist letters and also say this book is fake. Yeah. 
you know? So, so threatening legal action is the best thing you could have done to make this book more popular. <laughs> mm -hmm. But the two biggest takeaways, at least for me, the two biggest takeaways from, from Fire and Fury is number one, the president doesn't trust men with mustaches. Okay. There's a part near the beginning of the book where uh, Steve Bannon is talking with uh, Rupert Murdoch, I believe. And uh, they're talking about the president's cabinet. And uh, Rupert Murdoch is like, hey, you know who Trump should hire? Uh, this guy. And Steve Bannon says, oh, no, Trump wouldn't hire that guy. That guy has a mustache. Trump doesn't trust people like that. <laughs> now, that hurts. That really hurts. It does. And the the weird thing is that I know Donald Trump hates Mexicans, but somehow him hating men with mustaches hurts more than all the Mexican stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Like, sure, you said I was a rapist and a thief and a murderer who was bringing crime and drugs and ruining America. But saying I can't be trusted because I have a mustache, that's too far. Is it just like more more personal for you? Yeah. Is that it? Yeah. 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 How dare he say that about us? We are a proud people. Yes. We are a proud people. A and by we, I mean men with mustaches. Uh huh. We are, we are proud people, proud of our mustaches. So that's number one. Number two. Just because he can't grow one. Right? <laughs> the book also talks about how Trump never reads. He doesn't read books, he doesn't read newspapers. He'll maybe read a headline about himself, but that's it. He doesn't read. All of his official paperwork, his Oval Office paperwork, is full of charts and graphs and pictures because he, he just does not read. In fact, author Michael Wolff says that for all accounts, our president is functionally illiterate. Pause <laughs> for dramatic effect. And once again, you know, I'd like to say, man, man. Our president is functionally illiterate. Gee, if only someone could have predicted that. Yeah. If only someone, maybe some uh, uh, journalist with a keen eye or some, uh, some fan in a crowd or say some uh, very entertaining podcast. If only someone could have predicted that. Oh, wait, you know who did? We did. Yes. We called that shit. <laughs> Once again, I need to quote uh, one of the weirdest lines from uh, the band Fun. Uh, uh, Nate Ruiz is the lead singer of the band Fun. He started out in a band called The Format, and they're from Glendale, Arizona. And uh, he, Nate Ruiz went on his own, and he started the band Fun, and he had some really big hits. He sang the song Some Nights and We Are Young. He did a duet with Pink that was really popular and he sings in the Hamilton mixtape. Uh -huh. And he, he's just this really amazing singer and he, in one of his one of my favorite worst lines is in one of his most popular songs and it's a really good song and I really, really like it. But then he says the one stupid line. It's kind of like Eminem's Lose Yourself, which is a really good song until he says there's vomit on his sweater already. Mom's spaghetti. <laughs> like, that's a horrible line. Yeah. You shouldn't. It, no, no rapper should try and use the word spaghetti. <laughs> that's just that's just not that's bad songwriting, PT. Yeah. I, I, I'm, so I agree. Yeah. So uh, I need to once again quote Nate Ruess and the band Fun. Here they come again to jack my style. Because <laughs> we called that. We called the whole Trump is functionally illiterate. I don't know when because I don't want to look it up because we need a historian. Bruce, John, Guillermo, come on! <laughs> Hold your weight! And the other thousand or so listens that we are getting a month. Yes, yes. Which I which I looked up. We're getting like a thousand two hundred a month now is kind of the low end. Cool. Yeah. Cool. 
Well, I've been I've successfully gotten one or two uh, ads in some of my bookseller groups, so cool. that that should have helped. And you can kind of tell when I did it because you look at like the stats for notes from the bookstore, and here's the new episode that's been listened to nine times, and here's the next to last episode that's been listened to twelve. And here's the episode before that that was listened to 29 times. Oh, there you go. That's yeah. when I posted it. <laughs> I did. So thank you, fellow booksellers. And that is it for notes from the bookstore this week. And remember, boys and girls and gender Indiana Joneses, you too can save 10% on all of your purchases, which is surprising because when was the last time people cared about you too? There is one answer to that. All the weirdos in the world are here in New York City tonight. Yes. You're in New York City tonight. Here in New York City tonight. Spider-Man. <laughs> and cut. <laughs> <laughs>